Reverb. It's such an important effect in music production, but there are several different kinds and they all kind of have their own strengths and weaknesses. So which one should you use in what scenario? That's what we're gonna look at today. So let's dive right in. So over the years, evolving technologies and you know various creative approaches to space in music production has given us a few main types of reverb that you'll most often find in a uh, emulation plugin or perhaps a convolution plugin that you have in your DAW. You know those are going to be your rooms, your springs, halls, chambers and plates. Now there's a lot of other kind of creative and maybe more wacky, non-linear types of reverbs, uh, but we're gonna focus on the main ones today and just go through some of the most common scenarios and best uses for them when you are making beats or just music in general. One thing that is helpful to think about is the balance uh, that different reverbs give you. You know, on one hand, you've got like really flavorful and colorful reverbs, and on another hand, you've got more transparent and clear and smoother reverbs. So let's start with rooms, which is one of the more colorful types of reverb. And this is the type of reverb you, you get in a smaller space with a shorter tail. And obviously the term room is not gonna be very descriptive. You could have a room that's made of lots of different materials that will have a drastic effect on the sound. But if you think about it, we're used to hearing sounds in a real space and they're not like those long shimmering reverbs most of the time. It's, it's something that's a lot shorter and it gives us information about where a sound is in the world. So when you use a room reverb on a sound, it sort of comes alive in a day-to-day -day sense, which I really like. Most of the time I like to use this sensation for uh, two different scenarios. And the first is, is when you've got a sound that's just like a little bit too dry and it just feels like it's lacking a little bit of life, but you don't wanna just throw it in the middle of a cathedral, right, for example. But you can use a subtle room verb to give it a nice sense of depth without like washing anything out, especially when you've got a more complex mix. So here's just a dry clap, right? Here it is in the room. Now you might have like a guitar sound, uh, something kind of staccato-y or percussive, and you might think that it sounds a little bit dry and needs a little bit of life, just like we talked about. Maybe you don't want to wash it out too much, so you throw a little room reverb and all of a sudden it sounds like this. It almost sounds like you're standing in a room with that person playing the guitar, which is, is kind of cool. The other scenario that I really like to use room reverbs on is when I want a vocal to sound a little bit more intimate or even you know a vocal and guitar, sort of a singer songwriter thing. So if we if we had a vocal like this that was dry. Treading in the back seat, watching clouds go by. It's got kind of that intimate feel like you want them to be singing right in front of you kind of thing and so if you if you throw a room reverb on that in the back seat, watching clouds go by. it has a really nice personable quality to it without making you feel like you're adding a normal type of reverb it, it just puts it in a different context which which i really like now the last thing i really like to use room reverbs on is like percussive sounds okay like literally perks so if you got something like this you just throw a room reverb on there It gives it that depth, but you still have room in the mix for all other kinds of spaces and delays and other layers and stuff. Another type of reverb to play around with are spring reverbs. And this method of routing audio through an actual spring and then recorded, it, it just made this like really unique bouncy quality to the source. But what I like about it is that it immediately makes things sound vintage. And I'm talking soul records, surf rock, you know, a lot of the genres that were popular when this technology started to emerge and uh, become ubiquitous, right? So they're really great for guitars, vocals, and kind of anything else you want to drop that vintage flavor on, especially mono springs. So let's let's go ahead and try that out. It's just like instant vintage. I also think that spring reverbs really excel too. Um, if you don't just want to go after the vintage thing, they're really nice for like sending one particular sound into space and you can 
have multiple spaces going on at the same time because if one space is stereo and another is mono, it gives you a really nice separation where you can add all kinds of creative effects. So if you just had something, you know, a, a weird kind of guitar sound like this, and you throw it in the spring reverb, So it's just something to think about and get creative with. Also remember too, um, especially if you're using a convolution reverb with impulse responses, there's lots of different types of spring reverbs too. So you can get really creative and really wacky with uh, the, the type of spring that you choose, the type of material that it was recorded through. Oh, that's so cool. I love, I love spring reverbs, they're so cool. And that brings us to our hall and chamber reverbs, which are gonna be a little bit more toward the clear and transparent and smooth side of the scale in comparison with the springs and room reverbs. And when I first started making music, I never really understood when you were supposed to use a chamber versus a hall. You know, perhaps there's no one single answer to that <laughs> in the end anyway, but there's some interesting characteristics with each one that will help guide you in the right direction for whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. But both of them are gonna be really well-rounded and really versatile for most sounds. I mean, they're really great when you want like your leads or your vocals or your snare drums or whatever uh, to be epic and sort of larger than life because they're going to naturally have those longer decay times for you to work with. Now, halls are going to be modeled after concert halls, right? So like where an orchestral performance would take place, for example. And I like to use this type of reverb when you want to draw more attention to the space that you've chosen for your sound because it naturally has more color and flavor embedded within. So for example, if you've got like a simpler arrangement that's a little bit more sparse, you're gonna have more room in the mix for that type of reverb to shine. So here's our clap sound through the hall. So let's take a listen to uh, what a chamber sounds like next to a hall. So here's a hall. And here's your chamber. Chambers tend to be a little bit more clear and they'll have a little bit less color than a hall reverb would. And so that's really nice and gives you more flexibility when you have more of a complex arrangement and you don't have as much room to work with uh, in the mix and you can drench things in reverb still without completely muddying up everything, maybe as you would if you were using uh, a hall reverb in the same way for the same arrangement. So let's take a listen to what these vocals sound like in one versus the other. So here's a hall. Riding in the back seat, watching clouds go by. Riding in the back seat, watching clouds go by. And they both sound great on vocals, it just comes down to preference. But in general, I think that halls or chambers would be a good choice to have on tap when you just wanna send something to like a generally good reverb, a you know, long decay reverb. Pick whichever one uh, you tend to like more, stick with that, and of course experiment with different configurations as well. And last, but certainly not least, are plate reverbs, which are my absolute favorite reverbs of all time. I cannot live without them. I love them to death. Now, similar to spring reverbs, plates aren't like trying to model a real space. It's just audio recorded through a large metal plate. Actually, it could be a small metal plate too. And then recorded with a contact mic, but it, it just gives you like this lush, ultra smooth, decay. I mean, it's just heavenly. So if you think of reverb as kind of a series of quick delays, the less you hear the individual delays, the, the smoother the result will be. And so that balance that we were talking about between flavor and color and smooth, this is going to be all the way on one side of the smooth side, right? Smooth and transparent. And just like with halls and chambers, it's going to be a great choice for most instruments, but I like to save them for, you know, the things that are most prominent in the mix, like you know, your vocals and your leads and your snare drums and that kind of thing. So here, let's, just, let's take a listen to what a plate sounds like with a clap sound. I could listen to that all day, just a clap in, into a plate. <laughs> One thing that plates really excel at too is if you're looking for a brighter reverb, try using a plate first because the nature of the method that they use to actually, well, in this case, get the impulse response, but in the originals to actually run it through a plate, the nature of the material 
is such that the higher frequencies become more audible to us. And so they're an awesome choice for a nice, smooth, bright reverb. And I tend to think that the brighter things are in a mix, the more prominent they are. So the more things that you care about in the mix that you want to be kind of upfront and bright, try a plate sound. Let's just, let's take a listen to what the vocals sound like with this plate. Riding in the back seat, watching clouds go Now here's what the hall sounds like. Riding in the back seat, watching clouds go by. <laughs> I'm just such a sucker for the plate sound, it's crazy. Sounds great on guitars too. Now we know there's no like right or wrong way to use reverbs, but you can use them in, in different contexts to create some really interesting results. So I'd love to know how you guys use these different types of reverbs and how you differentiate between using different types in your beats. Let us know down below and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.